Pisanolo province has been locked down for almost two months, and the rest of the university has been temporarily closed, and all of us are working from home and from our residences. And this timeline will help you understand more about our situation. And I think we have quite similar uh, condition and timeline. We started to follow COVID-19 prevention in the previous semester. And at the end of March, we practiced physical distancing and organized online final exam. The faculty Thanks, has provided, sorry? The faculty has provided hand alcohol gels in front of all our faculty's buildings, in front of our office rooms and we spray disinfectant in all faculty buildings. And our final year students had to present their cooperative education or professional training experiences online. Everything has turned to, uh, to be online. And here we are during this semester break, our colleagues are teaching a few courses online and all of our lecturers are preparing for their online lessons for the upcoming semester. And in the next semester, we are going to teach online until the end of March, uh, sorry, until the end of July. And we expect to return to normal classrooms if the situation gets better and stabilizes. As you can see from this picture, which, is, which was taken uh, in the middle of March, we had our last lecturers meeting. Almost all of us, you could see that we wore masks already. And it was just before our university temporarily closed. This was the first few days of our final exam at the end of March. All, all students had their temperature checked um, and they used ma face masks before coming into their exam rooms. And after a few days, all of us had to organize final exam online. After that, the faculty and university spray disinfectant or chemical liquid to destroy viruses both inside and outside of our faculties and universities building. The Faculty of Humanities has attempted to provide guidelines for our staff, students, and the public to prevent themselves from COVID-19. We have our website, social media page, and poster to share this information. So you can see from our announcement here. And this slide is to give you an overview of our faculty. We have seven departments, including Thai linguistics, folklore, philosophy, and religion, and the Department of English. The Department of Western Languages offers courses in French and Spanish, the Department of Eastern Languages offers courses in Korean, Chinese, uh, Japanese, and Myanmar studies. We also uh, provide courses in Vietnamese and Indonesian. Moreover, we have the Department of Music and Performing Arts. The faculty has four main missions, including teaching, research, academic services, and cultural preservation. This slide shows you our online teaching and learning preparation during the lockdown period. For our lecturers, we did a survey on online teaching preparation. Our suggested platforms to teach are Microsoft Teams, Google Meet, Moodle, or MU eLearning. And based on our survey result, the faculty provides studio rooms for our lecturers to record their lessons in advance. And we also use office and computer rooms to prepare our lesson. For our students, we did a survey on online learning preparation as well. We are preparing online orientation program for our new students and their parents. And based on our survey results again, the majority of our students are ready to study online. However, there are some who need help with computers. So we are preparing computer rooms for them. Um, in the faculty area. The university is trying to assist them with internet access, reduce tuition fees and part-time jobs and funding for those who are really uh, need help. 
For our mission, our university is processing ethical consideration for research with human participants online. We have to extend few work schedule um, for academic services. There are online teaching tutorials by our faculty members who are experts in virtual classrooms. Our student affairs staff have to process student loan documents by post and by online channel. And for our cultural preservation activities, we did with limited numbers of participants face-to-face uh, -face, and we publicized it via online channel. These are some examples of how we organize our online training programs. These courses are run by our SITCOM or the Center for in Information Technology and Communication Services. And we also have these uh, tutorial available online. Our faculty also has a um, social media web page to share practical information on how to teach online as well for our faculty members. And based on our survey, our lecturers feel quite worried about teaching online. We have a lot of staff who have no online teaching experience before. The faculty therefore prepare a studio room assisted by our IT staff to help record our lessons before semester starts. And from these banners, as you could see, we are preparing our students for virtual classroom for the next semester. Our academic affairs staff are trying to communicate with students um, to be able to meet their lecturer on the first date uh, in their right channels. We also put our ICT exam or information computer and technology exam online. While we are working from home and our students are studying from home, our university library has home delivery services and all library members are able to request to borrow books online. This postal service is free of charge for all universities library members. Last few weeks, we had Visa Kabucha Day, which is an important Buddhist day. And we had activity organized by our cultural preservation team we invited the monk to our faculty to teach with limited number of people to join. And we recorded the teaching and posted it online on the next day. On our left-hand side um, is our poster for annual conference that we ha usually have each year with our partner universities in Thailand. And we plan to organize it online. And on the right-hand side, we have our local shops available online, which is uh, the shop nearby the university. So our staff and student could order food and stuff online and we can support the community in uh, this way. Now we are in the most important part in my presentation. Although we are trying to prepare everything, we still have a lot of challenges difficulties and concerns in this coming semester. This information is taken from our faculty survey and meeting. For lecturers, some of us still have insufficient online teaching skills. Me too. We tend to have technological anxieties because of internet connection and inexperience of new platforms. And we foresee problems with evaluation and reliability of testing in many courses. Our academic staff in the Department of Music and Performing Arts, for example, are working on how to teach their practice-based courses online in an effective way. Most of us um, already have health issues with eyesight and office syndrome because we have a look at a computer screen for too long. From our students' part, we are quite worried about their self-learning motivation because they will study far from the university with limited internet connection. Students have no music, musical instruments to practice at home, for example. And our performing arts students have no chance to adjust their muscle uh, by their lecturers and by their trainer. Moreover, we are worried about our senior students 
who have to take cooperative education or professional training program. And there are a lot of projects that we need to cancel, for example, face-to-face -face orientation and many cultural activities. We need to postpone student exchange program. And this is almost my last slide. We outline major challenges and plan to deal with them. We think it is important for us to be flexible of rules and regulations related to online education. And we have our plan to do research projects to improve the quality of online teaching and learning. We have to prioritize projects to help affected students and faculty members. And last, we have to reconsider risk management and be ready to adjust. From these normal classroom activities, we are worried about our students because they have to practice um, their musical instrument and performing arts, for example, face-to-face uh, -face with their lecturers. But at the same time, we have to follow physical distancing regulations. Our academic staff plan to teach content first um, before midterm exam, and then they plan to have face-to-face -face interaction after we could, have, we could return to normal classrooms. So we think it is difficult for our lecturers to teach online because they have to interact with students, uh, in particular with uh, music and performing arts, apart from foreign languages courses. But we are trying to do our best to adjust to this new normal. And we just hope the situation will get better. And thank you for listening to my presentation and feel free to ask question or share your opinion later on. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wasin, uh, for the uh, overview and, and um, summary of what you have done at, uh, at the university. And may I ask uh, whether the, um, the efforts have been done a uh, uh, collective uh, in terms of the whole university or is it just um, the faculty at the moment? We, are, um, we have both at university and faculty levels uh, mm -hmm. for our faculty level, we try to go into detail of how our faculty of humanities um, will deal with uh, teaching online and learning online for the upcoming semester. For the university level, they try to set the policy that can be applicable and practical for students in all faculties. For example, they plan to have um, tuition, reduced tuition fee and they plan to have internet access for students. Right, okay. So um, I've got, uh, I see a few uh, questions also in the chat and um, uh, a few with me now, but we will address the questions right after all the presentations are done. All right, so okay, without uh, further ado, let's pass it to uh, Mr. Pujo, are you ready? Thank you, Dr. Wasinrat. All right, while, while waiting, maybe um, uh, after this, our friends from Narisman would like to ask uh, also questions to, to, to the panelists yeah, later. All right, so uh, Mr. Pujo, over to you. Good morning, everyone. Dr. Visa, Dr. Mira, Dr. Wansirat, and all teachers and students in International Islamic University, Malaysia, and all teachers and students in Nariswan University. May I greet in Bahasa first? Uh, Assalamualaikum. Selamat pagi, Malaysia. Selamat menunaikan ibadah puasa. Salam sejahtera. Terima kasih. And for <laughs> And for my colleagues in Nariswan, Sawadika, Oton Krab, Gap, Achan Pujo, Nai Webinar in Akrab. Okay, I will start. I was staff in Nariswan University who teach Indonesian language. Uh, so surprised that the first time I got my message from. Uh, Dr. Wansirat that oh, uh, 
can you uh, join with the webinar? I said, okay. Then I'm not expect to be a panelist like this, but finally, okay, I should uh, share my experience uh, about uh, e-learning, Moodle e-learning platform in Nariswan University. Yes, do that. Uh, I make some tutorial how to use e-learning by request from my colleagues that they need some guidance or example about how to use uh, e-learning Moodle in Nariswan University. So I saw in here there is a Mr. James, Mr. Charlie, Mrs. Nancy, how are you? And so let's start uh, to share my experience use e-learning Moodle platform and you e-learning. Okay. The Nariswan University develop and innovate the learning process with the technology and install the platform Moodle e-learning and facilitate the lectures and students. This is NU e-learning. In this side, every teachers and students get access to this platform. Every students and lectures has a ID and email address to access this website. And, and sitcom in Narison University is support and guide uh, for lecturers to build the e-learning. So I have an opportunity to join the training in uh, training center. And I was lucky because I can attend two times course. And that's why I start to build uh, my e-learning uh, model. Uh, I start to build the e-learning since 2017, so three years ago. So why I use e-learning? Why this is the background? Why I use? Why do I use a new e-learning platform as a part of a teaching or learning process in the classroom? Uh, I had thought about three courses every semester. And every semester, there is a four to six group to, to manage the class. So I choose uh, this platform to organize teaching material and resources and to manage score and, and easy to access to link to uh, register system in Narison University. We have register uh, system to uh, manage the grade, uh, giving information and schedule of learning, and to observe student activities. Sometimes I just observe students in the classroom, but with this uh, platform, I can. Uh, observe and monitoring student activity outside of the classroom. And I do observe to uh, my students when I was teaching in uh, Nariswan University that the students have a lot of device, for example, like handphone, like a tablet, like a laptop. Yeah, most, most of them using a phone and bring to, to the class. So uh, why I didn't use that uh, device to be part of learning? So I decided to build the e-learning model. And also the internet connection in Thailand is very fast. So it's support to, to do the learning process. So how, how I start, uh, uh, let me come back again, uh, why I, I very excited to use this platform because uh, 
this model can organizing lessons very well. So I have six course and then I can organize and update and develop every semester. So I don't need to found or to find the material again in the next semester. I just update and develop. And I can manage scores for uh, 100 students or 200 students very easy. Uh, and then I, I just can share to register to report, to making a report. So it's helped me a lot to, to manage. And this, this graphic is, I can observe the activity of the students every day. Yeah. Uh, when they log in, when they do ex, uh, quiz, when they do lessons, when they uh, uh, chat in the forum, because there is a panel chat in the forum too. So I start to uploading teaching and materials and preparing lessons and designing weekly quiz and making question bank for quiz and for exam. I also have a YouTube channel so I can uh, link to this uh, model as a material teaching. And then how I start to build this platform, uh, I start to describe the course. What is the subject that I teach? Uh, and then I, I give a, a, like a rule and regulation how to use the, the e-learning so students can understand how to use it. And then uh, if you, I saw uh, my colleagues in here also listening, if you want to start this uh, Moodle, or you already have it, uh, or uh, you can uh, contact to the staff in the training center to guide you, because they are very helpful to, to guide, to build this uh, Moodle platform. And me too, I have uh, experience that the first time I built this uh, uh, Moodle learning, I have a lot of problems. I don't know about the platform. Some of of uh, final, I don't understand, but I try to contact by email, a colleague, and they are very helpful to help me. And uploading the material, this is the first time that I did it uh, to prepare my lesson is, uh, you can uploading a variety of material, like a slide show presentation, PowerPoint presentation, and then digital textbook, audio file, and video file. Yeah. So uh, start uh, 2017, I start to reduce using uh, papers or textbook. So they just use a tablet or cell phone in the classroom. They can learn and follow the, the lesson. And then this part is uh, creating the lesson. This part is uh, challenging because uh, this part, I should thinking aloud how to make it flow of learning. Uh, my suggestion is if you, the first time to make it a lesson, please make a mapping first to, to create the lesson. So, the step one, what they should read, step two, step three, step four, and continue. Uh, take a time, but this is very useful. Yeah. So the first is prepare your material and making mapping and start to doing a lesson, creating the lesson. Yeah. This is uh, take a time, but it's very useful. You can develop again, you can edit again, yeah. you can set up again, okay? And then, uh, Making quizzes in question bank. Yeah, uh, I also make some tutorial in YouTube. Maybe my colleagues also already watch it. And uh, this is that I spend a lot of time in the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, to creating the question. 
So I have uh, every course almost 100 questions. So I can, I can share to my quiz, I share to my final exam, or sometimes to recall back or review when I'm teaching. So they can uh, uh, access at home to learn by ask, uh, doing quiz. Uh, actually, I, I make it a weekly quiz. So students uh, every week have a quiz to learn and to review. And the I have time five minutes, okay. And how to deliver the lesson? This is uh, I think is uh, important that I should share to all my colleagues or to my friends in Malaysia that introducing e-learning in the first week meeting is very important to the students. Not all the students understand how to use their device. They use their cell phone, sometimes just selfie and using for Instagram or Facebook and playing games. That's what I observe every day in the classroom. So please introduce and motivate them to, to use device for learning. And the first time I asked them to enroll to my course, and I make sure one by one that they already register in the course. I guide them one by one to, to enroll in the course. And in the first week, I do trial activity. Trial activity like a quiz, like assignment in the classroom. But now situation is different, right? So maybe we can do it by online. And set rules and regulation. Please make set a, a regulation that, uh, that, that make a student aware to use uh, platform e-learning properly. Yeah. Sometimes they forget, sometimes they not aware about, oh, I, I, don't, I don't need to do e-learning, something like that. Because, oh, I have a regular learning before. So make a schedule, remind them, to, to use e-learning. So uh, I try to manage my classes every day when I'm teaching. I start to open e-learning at least 20 or 30 minutes. So they have a habit to use e-learning. And then I, I continue with the regular uh, lecturing like this. So, uh, usually the first year or second year students, they will be uh, uh, maybe confused how to use it. But after they study with me two, three times, they already know that I already success to build the habit how to use e-learning. So after they uh, learning in the class and then they come back home, they can do quiz and activity and learning by themselves at their dorm or their apartment. So, uh, building the habit of uh, using uh, uh, online learning is I start since three or uh, two or three years ago. Uh, and then I do survey and asking and ask this feedback from the students how about uh, using e-learning as a part of uh, learning. And they say that they enjoy using e-learning and they can gain access to lesson anywhere at any time. Some of students cannot attend the class because they have a personal business, they come back home and they do activity overseas and they still can contact, oh, uh, Achan, our oh, teacher, or oh, lecture, can I still uh, do quiz or doing activity uh, in your class so I can attend by online? Yes, I said, you can, you can follow the, the, and access the e so that is a benefit that I got it. And every devices and platform are practical and connecting to many kind of uh, website, YouTube channel or, or uh, platform, another platform. I also try to ask my colleagues who use uh, this platform what they are response. They say that, yeah, and you e-learning 
it's convenient and it's practical to organize teaching material i prove it already and it's over variety of tool to design activities and assign so can i conclude my experience that yeah model is certainly one of the leaders not the leaders among other learning application with more accessibility among learners and acceptance among academic institutions is definitely a big part of the solution and also open up more opportunities for learning and direction that is my experience using the learning model i hope that my experience could give information so i hope in this situation you can use this uh, platform uh, especially in uh, naris one and stay at home keep healthy start using e-learning thank you come back again to dr firsa thank you mr pujo yes the last uh, advice is very very important start using for those of you who haven't even started, it is going to be a shocker. Um, all right, I've got questions coming in as well, but I will reserve that till the end. Uh, thank you, Mr. Pujo. Um, I agree. We 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 we, we have to start um, this to be something um, habitual, and I, I'm 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 glad that over in IIUM and also Malaysia and everywhere in the world, we. The online thing is a must. It's here to stay. So, um, and I know that Dr. Mira, our next uh, panelist, would have a lot to say also on how IIUM um, is adapting or um, has addressed uh, the situation for the university. So, thank you, Mr. Pujo, and let's listen to what Dr. Mira has to say. Over to you, Dr. Mira. Okay, thank you. Um, let me share my screen first. All right. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Bismillah, Rahim, and Assalamualaikum to uh, fellow colleagues from IUM uh, as well as from um, other university and I'm so glad uh, that we have this opportunity to share and learn. I really learned a lot from uh, the first two panelists. I really appreciate uh, the, the knowledge sharing and I think it will help us to get prepared with uh, our uh, ERTL which I'm going to uh, share with you later on. Okay, so uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Mira, uh, Mira Kartiwi, uh, and currently I'm um, uh, in charge with e-learning unit uh, in Center for Professional Development. And um, honestly, I'm nervous now, uh, knowing that other universities have done a lot. <laughs> so I hope I'm not going to disappoint everyone. Uh, okay, so... With COVID-19, I think the most of the discussion has always been focused on struggle, fear, and helpless, especially for education. Um, and I've gone through quite a number of uh, um, literatures. The debate has always been on face-to-face -face versus online. Uh, so the debate has always been on the mode rather than on learning itself. So it seems that we put learning aside and we focus so much on the mode. Uh, but I think what is very critical now is to understand that uh, learning is needs to take place uh, despite the mood. Um, so I've gone through quite a number of articles recently, especially since the beginning of the uh, COVID uh, pandemic. Let me just, um, sorry. Okay. Uh, so since the beginning of COVID session, we have a lot of, uh, I'm not sure, arguments, I think, among uh, educators uh, on the benefits uh, of online learning um, in mitigating the issues in learning during the pandemic. Um, 
There are some skepticism, which I can understand why, looking at all those uh, articles. But there are also over optimism, <laughs> which I also uh, can relate to, uh, having the experience of uh, teaching online uh, for a few uh, semesters, uh, because in my faculty, uh, it is made compulsory for every week 13 or week 12, sometimes that we carry out our teaching and learning online to uh, make sure that the students is exposed to such technology of online learning. It's more than um, three years now. Uh, the Dean actually initiated this with uh, the team, the DDIA, DDSA. Uh, so I really, really thankful that uh, we do have that opportunities. Uh, and it is really a relief that now when the time comes, uh, we really put that experience to perspective. But we also need to understand there are some challenges that uh, especially from other faculties need to experience. But looking at these articles, I can very much relate on um, how people actually perceive this uh, as uh, opportunities on the other side as a threat. And um, also, if you look at a lot of uh, educate, uh, a lot of publications from education perspective, uh, there are more, I think the discussion has have geared towards what, how to make it constructive. Yes, there are issues. Uh, yes, there are benefits, but in what way shall we uh, gear all these uh, issues and uh, challenges into something that is constructive? So I've, I've gone through quite a number of those just because I, I'm in charge with e-learning. So I really have to know the kind of challenges that different faculty has, especially when embarking on online learning. So this is the stand for IIUM, uh, for International Islamic University. Um, initially, we postponed for two weeks. That's when the first MCO, Movement Control Order, was in place. Uh, but then after uh, the announcement that we will, the government will extend the MCO, uh, the university um, have made the decisions to defer the normal classes until 1st of June. The reason is uh, because of uh, a few considerations, which in this case are related to the physical and mental well-being of the students and staff, the equity in terms of number of students. Currently, many of the students actually have left uh, campus, means that they are actually back home. And uh, there are some students which have no uh, laptops or uh, no internet access. So we have to take them into considerations as well. Um, and assumptions that uh, the MCO will be lifted by 1st of June the, uh, to, to ensure that we facilitate easier movement for students from home back to campus, as well as to provide reasonable lead time. So this is actually what was uh, released by officially by university uh, a, few, a few days ago. Um, just to re reiterate oh, the reasoning why uh, we didn't actually start online learning earlier. Uh, but soon, uh, as of 1st of June, uh, we will actually embark on ERTL, uh, or what we call as Emergency Remote Teaching and Learning. And on this period, starting from this uh, 1st of June, all classes except those that approved by uh, DRAIL. So DRAIL is Deputy Rector Academic and Industrial Linkages. They, are, they have a list of courses in which uh, allowed to have uh, face-to-face uh, -face carried out due to the nature of the course. Um, otherwise, the rest would need to be carried out online. And from the 1st June to 7th of June, uh, the lecturers are uh, required to conduct trial runs or dry runs uh, to get a feel on how such a mode can actually be carried out. Uh, the official one, the formal one, uh, will, be, uh, will begin on uh, June 15th. So let me share my experience in unboxing. So <laughs> my title is Unboxing E-Learning. And the reason why, because I was thinking, how should I put, what kind of title should I put? But then when I'm thinking, um, this is actually the exact thing that I, uh, that we've encountered you know, when we uh, first heard about the MCO and the chances that the students will not be able to join the class face-to-face uh, -face, physically. So we have to look at something in our, uh, cupboard, uh, a box, something called e-learning, which we have sometimes put aside. Uh, now we have to really unbox it. We really have to open and look at it. 
the problem is some of us have expectations, some of us have no expectations. So when we unbox that, there are a few things merge. So starting with um, perceived, there are, there are a lot of issues with perceived challenges. I put it as perceived, yeah, because it may not necessarily true that it is a challenges. So there are perceived of challenges, there are issues with infrastructure, there are issues with uh, perceived, ben uh, there are perceived benefits. So some people are uh, seeing this as an opportunity uh, and then there are uh, anxious with there, there are issues with paradigm shift and then uh, some people um, might see this in different. So as you can see, the discussion, the, the discussion has been various. Um, so Right before we have the MCO announced, uh, my, my unit have actually planned for uh, e-learning clinic, which in this case, we actually have some information from the ministry that there might be some uh, issues with the face-to-face, -face, so please get your university prepared with online learning. So uh, we've discussed at uh, the ministry level with MAP, uh, MAPTA, so it's actually a national council of e-learning uh, unit uh, across the country for all government university, pu public university. So uh, when we have this uh, plan, we, we, were not, uh, we were not yet realized that the MCO will actually be imposed that soon. So, but anyway, uh, it was actually scheduled the day before the actual uh, MCOs um, begin. So when we started this session, I realized uh, everybody was anxious. We had more than 100 people actually registered to the session uh, and everybody was kind of worried whether they can actually carry it out online, the, the session online. But uh, as soon as it is announced that we will postpone. So I can see on the second day, on the third day, uh, the number of attendance is not that many, but still there are people who are very uh, enthusiastic, I should call it, uh, into e-learning and they're, they're actually um, join every each and every session um, throughout the e learning the first e learning clinic. I didn't actually put the facilitators because of unfortunately <laughs> uh, most of the sessions actually facilitated by me. I I, I uh, at that moment because I was panicked. I don't know who asked who to ask for help. Uh, so I just I, I think that maybe it's a good idea to just uh, have a very informal sessions online with uh, all of my colleagues. Uh, and so glad that by the end of uh, the uh, session, by the end of the e-learning clinic, I managed to get one friend from UMP and, and he was very nice to offer his help. So on 25th, we have one session with Dr. Gunn from UMP. Uh, and to understand the nature of challenges, because I don't think it would be nice to, uh, for us to just assume what our students and our staff is actually Experience. So our center decided to have the uh, student e-learning readiness. I, I, I was uh, informed that the other centers is who actually quite, uh, doing quite similar approach, but uh, so glad that we have a lot of help from a few officers. So we have um, most of the, we have responses, the most responses when it comes to uh, the survey. So as of this morning, when I checked, we have reached about 15,000 students responded. Um, so what was asked in this survey, we actually asked about the health conditions, the e-learning experience, the infrastructure, whether they, they do have access to computer network and whatnot, and then e-learning readiness, uh, training, whether they need any training to use e-learning platform. Uh, so these, these, are, uh, these were the main uh, issues that we actually asked on top of some other, other important uh, issues that we believe should be included as well. But a few of these items actually, uh, I get this from, I got this from the MAPTA, from the, the, the Ministry uh, Council of e-learning. Uh, so they, they stress the importance uh, to us students, especially when it comes to uh, infrastructure, as well as uh, experience and readiness. Um, we, sorry, before I proceed, not only that we ask the students, we also ask the staff. So the same kind of questions, but in different kind of uh, perspective. So uh, this is from the learner. So we also ask from the, teach, from the teacher, what are the uh, experience? What are the access to infrastructure? What, what uh, infrastructure access do they have? Uh, how about the e-learning? What about the e-learning readiness and whether or not they need any training to use uh, the e-learning platform? I came across this study when I kind of designed on the next uh, 
uh, e-learning um, uh, training for the for the upcoming uh, e-learning clinic. So I came across this study where the primary source of the, uh, the most of the academic frustration during COVID-19 is uh, particularly uh, because of the feeling of the, the feeling of not supported by administration around uh, the challenges related to meeting all the students' learning needs, the high stakes testing, the ever-changing curriculum, and the work-life balance. And the only thing that is not balanced uh, is work life, uh, unfortunately, uh, these days. So this is. Uh, when I look at the studies, when I look at the actual experience that we've gone through in uh, the first e-learning clinic and uh, most of the comments that actually uh, arise, I know that we will have, we will need to have a lot of trainings. We will need to have a lot of practice. We will need to make a lot of uh, reassessment of the situation and try the new approach. And we will have to work so much on the shifting the, the shifting the mindset from delivering knowledge to facilitating learning. And this is a huge task. This is a huge task. So when I think about it, if I want to go fast, I can go alone. The problem is I want to go far. So I need to be together. I need to have someone uh, or uh, some people who have, who, who have the same, who share the same belief. Uh, so it, when I have this, um, and I'm, I'm not, uh, honestly, I, I don't believe in the ideas of superheroes uh, or superheroines. Uh, for me, that concept is kind of overrated, and um, but no hard feeling. Okay, if there's any Superman or Wonder Woman watching this program, no hard feeling. Uh, I just don't believe that uh, is a good concept for me. So what I have in mind is to ask around what are the resources that we have, and I came to I came across uh, the information that there were some group of people that has been trained uh, officially by university on. Um, uh, on working with um, education 4.0 uh, tools. So my thought, my only thought is we have to re-enable this team because otherwise um, I don't think it will work. It has to be, it has to be a collective effort. It will not be individual effort. So um, we, when, when, I, when I throw these ideas uh, a lot, uh, some people said, um, just enforce, ask them to work and help because they've been trained. And I, I don't believe in such forcing people who would actually do any good. So I asked them on volunteering basis. Uh, some people ask, uh, why volunteer? No one, trust me, good luck with that. No one will actually be uh, volunteering when it comes to this kind of thing. But um, I said, I, I, let me test my luck. And I think I'm, I'm, I was very lucky. I'm, I'm very lucky to say that a lot of our colleagues actually uh, volunteered uh, and helped. Uh, and now we have more than 30 educators, 1.2, I'm sorry, 4.0 team uh, members in, in, in the group. And this uh, WhatsApp group is just amazing. I feel like it's um, more of family rather than um, a colleagues. So I, 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 I believe we have to harness the power of altruism because uh, my experience going in the disaster area, altruism is the only, the only thing that makes community survive. So this is the initial uh, team that we have. As I said earlier, now it has grown uh, to more than 30 people. Um, and I'm, I'm very honored to meet all these kind hearted people. I don't think I would go this far without their support and this is just to prove that they have always been together with me uh, when I throw the idea okay let's have the e-learning clinic 2.0 which started a few weeks ago from 13th 7th of April to 8th, March, uh, 8th May um, everybody just volunteered I didn't even beg anyone so it, everybody just volunteered and uh, as you can see in here um, I, I truly believe that this COVID is a very kind teachers that allow us to see there are so many things that we can actually do together. Um, and not only us as a lecturer, I've also engaged, I contacted the students representative and I asked, is there any way we can actually collaborate? Because teacher alone, uh, 
doesn't make learning. So I think we have to work together. And amazingly, this student representative was very, very kind as well to join me in this one forum. Uh, they're very uh, constructive in giving feedback. Um, there are some uh, things that we, we managed to clarify. And uh, I'm so glad that the rector of, uh, rector of IAUM was there as well. I'm, I'm really appreciate the session. And I'm, I'm sure many of our colleagues also appreciate the session. We really, it's very insightful session. And just yesterday we have finished another session. It's actually initiated by uh, my boss, Prof Noli, my teacher. Uh, she teach me a lot to how to be strong and how to be uh, focused on, on uh, delivering my my uh, my my amana my responsibility. So she said, okay, so we have to wrap up. We have to need uh, we have to have a lot a uh, lot more sessions. But let's end this uh, session with a few more topics. And the last topics actually we invited a lot of uh, we, we invited all directors. Uh, from a few relevant uh, offices from uh, deputy director. We have deputy director, uh, academic professor G. We have uh, uh, the director of KCA, director, the dean of CPS, director of Ahmad. And we sit down, uh, we actually had a forum yesterday to allow colleagues to actually ask questions. While we are working with e-learning clinic, what I can share is actually we also have uh, these online teaching open resources, it is actually a compilation of hands-on modules on e-learning donated, and I, I have to make it clear, it is a donation by academic staff from different faculties. So they created the modules, hands-on modules, uh, that they just make it to share with, with everyone. If I can just share a bit, uh, maybe I can sort of give some ideas how it looks like. So this is how it looks like, uh, the uh, OTOR, OTOR 101. So as you can see in here, we have, uh, it is actually open for all uh, staff, IUM. Uh, so as you can see, all these modules actually developed by our colleagues, all on voluntarily, voluntary basis. Uh, and we also have quite an, uh, uh, a lot of resources when it comes to uh, training video uh, video tutorials. So this is all comes from our colleagues. None of this actually built professionally. Um, we have all the sessions of the e-learning clinic and we have all um, resources that uh, some of our colleagues donated as well to guide in terms of uh, assessment. So what I want to highlights is that um, this this is doable it is it is difficult it is difficult time but there's nothing impossible so what I want to highlight is uh, with e-learning we should focus on regular and substantive student instructor interactivity so we have to make sure we take care of both students and instructor because otherwise uh, this is the the research shows that it is the key determinant of quality. If we want to shoot for education quality, then we have to take care of both of the parties. We should take care of the students. We should also take care of the instructors. And what I can see from many disasters that I've gone through, especially for humanitarian visits, uh, the, the main disaster doesn't destroy health, physical infrastructure. It may it seems like so, but the actual uh, disaster actually testing the faith, agility, and learning culture. So with this, I would want to highlight that as an educator, let's not assume on our children's learning agility. This, is, this would be the ideal scenario. But how about this? Should we stop learning? The fact that in most cases, no, the children will still come to whatever kind of school they have and they still want to learn because education gives hope. Some people said, oh, the millennials are very competitive. I don't think they will help each other. This is, I have proven myself wrong. So I took all of my students to a competition. It's a national competition. My, my thought is that they will just compete each other uh, to the end. <laughs> and then they will just make sure everybody uh, can be defeated. And I've proven myself wrong. Yes, we won. But this is not the good news for, I mean, not, it is a good news, but not so good news as compared to that when I know 
my students didn't actually leave the venue until all the groups submitted the work. So they cheered on the last group that uh, was not able uh, to finish earlier. So they, they cheered and they support until everybody actually uh, managed to, to uh, submit and complete the, the competition. I think this is what we have to cherish. This is what we have to celebrate in this difficult time. They will, they will help each other. And uh, last but not least, let's lead by example. My father used to say, don't claim that you are a good cook until you taste uh, the food that other people cook. So uh, I took a number of online courses. Okay, so uh, some paid, this is the paid courses, uh, some uh, uh, free courses. Uh, so just want to get a sense because otherwise I will know uh, in what in which part I'm actually didn't do well, especially in delivering my content, unless I see that there are ways, other ways that actually uh, I should I should try or I should go. Uh, and all these courses, as I said, they are uh, for, I mean, like it, it is because uh, of my own interest and uh, there are some other courses that uh, I have to take it. So I can get a feel of the students that really have to take our course because they have to take it. And I can also feel the students that take our course because they love the course. So uh, that puts me in perspective on what kind of support that we have to provide to our students later on. So wallahu alam is so up. And I think that will be the sharing from me. Looking forward for sharing uh, from the audience and the two panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mira, um, for the wonderful uh, presentation just now. Um, I was just talking to the panelists earlier today um, with the sudden uh, need to embark on the whole e-learning fiasco, tools, apps, e-learning platforms. You know, I think personally, uh, when people say less is more, I think I need more just to be reminded because it's something new. I mean, it's not something new uh, in terms of we haven't started e-learning uh, ever. It's to really uh, go into fifth gear and like it or not, we've got to do it. It's a do or die thing. So, so to me, um, yes, Dr. Mira, thank you uh, for highlighting all the, the efforts done by IIUM on the e-learning. Uh, every day, without fail, um, uh, either we go on the YouTube link and also the sharing on Zoom. Um, and we think that, oh my goodness, this is too much information. I can't digest. And every time we have, you know, the lecturers are feeling, okay, I, I should do this. I should go on Moodle or Google Classroom. Which one? You know, this, this um, decision-making, anxiety and all that. But whenever the, 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 the sessions come on, we still watch it. We go on YouTube and we watch it because now more information is okay. <laughs> so don't worry about the attendance dropping. Uh, even today, I, I don't, uh, we don't expect people to watch because maybe they are on fifth gear now, going into uh, uh, their preparation for the classes. All right. So, um, before I address the questions that I have here, maybe those who are listening in would like to post questions too. So um, anybody from Anaris one, uh, anybody would like to post questions, can you please on your mic? And post your question, anybody? All right, while they prepare their questions, I have questions. Okay, um, to Narison University. Uh, in terms of the preparation and uh, academically, uh, how, how is the university tackling uh, issues of quality in teaching, especially when, when we're, we're not sure whether um, the students are probably able to get access uh, in terms of the internet, um, wherever they may be, uh, how 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 does your university ensure uh, the quality of delivery when it's done online? The Wasinrat maybe. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. I think we are trying to deal with that issue because um, 
as you have seen from my presentation, we just switch from our normal exam uh, classroom into uh, and we took exam online for every courses for the previous semester. And um, I just would like to answer some question from the chat first. Um, the question asked me, how did, I, how did we deal with uh, transferring from normal classroom exam to exam online? For the course that we had with content-based, we allowed our students to have a uh, take-home exam. And for practice-based, we asked our students to record uh, their practice um, via online channel. And then the students submitted their piece of video clip to their lecturers, and then we, 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 we grade them. OK. Um, actually, that issue is the, the most important problem that we have to deal with in the overall uh, situation, just like Dr. Mira mentioned about the quality of teaching and learning. And it's our faculty's um, plan to do more research about how to improve the quality of teaching and learning. We try to encourage our faculty members who have already had um, their background about using online teaching and learning to share with us their, their tips and their, uh, their strategy to motivate students to, to learn and how we implement different um, testing methods for our students. We, we try to find a better way to evaluate our students. And actually our faculty's meeting, we had um, talked about how uh, should we shift our testing system from grading A, B, C, D to uh, S or U system. And we, we, we discuss about that, but it depends on our curriculum as well, if it allowed us to, to change from giving students only satisfying or unsatisfying during this online education because it is difficult for us to evaluate students um, as accurately as uh, our previous style of taking uh, exam in normal classroom. But it seems difficult for us as well. <laughs> we need to, um, to try better way for that. Okay, maybe my colleague will, will help share any other ideas. <laughs> Um, Dr. Uh, let me add. Oh, sorry. Uh, Dr. Pisa? Yes, Dr. Zari. Uh, Hi, Zari. I'm Dr. Zari Naya from um, UKM, Bangi, Malaysia. Um, if I can just address this question regarding, um, of course, yeah, I agree that we are having um, quite a hectic uh, new norm here yeah with the e-learning and dr pisa did mention it's not something that we it's not something that is new but it's somehow new uh it's it's regarding uh, it's regarding um i would like to ask regarding the synchronous and asynchronous um, classrooms or lessons that you have is there any are there any challenges in in, in thailand or even in iium in the way you address um classroom online classroom meet because at UKM, we are, our challenge is trying very hard to make it um, non-synchronous, yeah? So meaning that we are making it asynchronous. So we find that quite challenging. So I'm just wondering whether um, your universities, you know, your, your, your university is having this as well as a challenge. Thank you, uh, Dr. Zarina. Um, maybe Dr. Mira would like to take that question. Okay, sure, sure. Um, so, because our e-learning officially is not yet uh, started, but what I can anticipate, it will also be in the same directions that um, people might opt for uh, synchronous rather than uh, a asynchronous approach because of the amount of time that you have to invest on preparing the materials. But throughout the e-learning clinic, we have make it clear that uh, um, as much as possible, uh, do I mean, like please uh, spare some 
uh, time, spare some time uh, just uh, to maybe prepare one or two topics first, get a feel. Maybe uh, we, our, our thought that it is impossible for us to prepare uh, everything and let's just uh, have everything synchronous. It's, most of the, it's because of our perceptions that it will be difficult to prepare one. But uh, when throughout our e-learning clinic, we have actually uh, assist our uh, colleague to have a look at different platforms. It doesn't have to be tools driven. Uh, mm -hmm. So the options actually been provided and we guide uh, and uh, uh, the e-learning um, materials that we provide, uh, provided in uh, OTOR, in Author 101, as well as in the websites. Uh, I have heard that many have started to prepare the asynchronous. So um, the supports need to be laid out first. Otherwise, uh, people might think that, okay, so on, yes, there are so many tutorials, but uh, how, how to use it. I mean, uh, without us showcasing that actually this can be done, uh, especially from the non-IT uh, domain. Uh, we have a lot of examples that uh, our colleagues from IRKHS, from Human Science actually did quite a, a lot of uh, 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 materials preparations for asynchronous. So people can sort of relate. Okay, so if, they, if he or she can do it, why not me? So I think we have to showcase those those spirit, those uh, patient, because otherwise uh, people might have that barriers. In, that's why I put it as perceived perceived challenges. It may not be a real challenges, but because of people have perceived it, so we have to prove otherwise with uh, support. So yeah, but I I kind of still anticipate we might still have issues for certain courses that people will opt for. Uh, synchronous. Let's, let's just not hope. Uh, I, I really hope that it will it will not be more than uh, more than fifty percent. I, I yeah. I'm very sure majority <coughs> will go synchronous. Yeah, because we 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 had started our 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 online <coughs> sorry our campus had started in April uh, mm -hmm. end of April and uh, we started the the e learning online and what we 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 have found that. There will be students who are, you know, no internet access at all. So therefore, when it, if if you talk about content, you know, content uh, lectures, subject content lectures, that's one. Mm -hmm. But when it, you're talking about English classes, language, yeah, where mm -hmm. a lot of spontaneous activities that you would like to do, uh, listening to them to, I mean, I mean, having role plays kind of thing, um, needed to. We we found that we needed to adjust and amend the activities because just you know one of the reasons one of the main reason is because when you do synchronous then not all students will be online so not students will be there so you know it, that's the that's the challenge i feel on on our part it was like trying this out and it didn't work because it, not not didn't work we tried this out and we found out that students couldn't get hold of this information and therefore we had to do the other way you know so that's where i, I find Rather a bit hectic, <laughs> yeah, yeah. stress too. <laughs> yeah. And at, at the ministry level, at the MAPTA level, that's what I sort of the, the kind of discussions that people share from other universities as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a blessing in this case that we kind of started a, a little bit yeah. late because of we can learn from other people's yes. challenges. And uh, MAPTA people are just so helpful with sharing the do's and don'ts. Uh, so I've, I've disseminated most of those informations with my colleagues. So I hope I hope uh, we can learn from those experience. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fiza. Thank you, Dr. Zarina. Thank you for sharing because you, uh, UKM, uh, National University of Malaysia, they've started their online classes and yeah. a lot of other universities in Malaysia, they've started earlier, but IUM will start um, on the 1st of June, but uh, we are given a, uh, um, about 10 days or two weeks to have a trial run with our mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, we will, uh, that's where we see what happens, but it's good to share because um, yeah. uh, what was important in the sharing uh, uh, we had yesterday with our Deputy Director of uh, Academic, mm -hmm. Professor Ji, was that as, and also our quality director, uh, Prof. Lihana, was that we need to ensure the learning outcomes are met. Yeah. Uh, however, however, uh, whatever way that we approach the, the tools or um, um, platforms, 
we've got to make sure uh, on that one. Yeah. So, so this is where, uh, yeah, it is a good ground for research. Yeah, everyone has yeah. their own ways of tackling this issue. So yeah. Thank you. If Dr. I can, yeah, if I can just add a little bit, we, we, you know, there, there's also like many plans of how to tackle where students have these difficulties. So one of them is, of course, uh, the visa is to, at the end of the day, to have to mail to these people in, in the, yes. you know, in the remote areas where there's no internet to, in the end, mail them, uh, send them a thumb drive kind of thing with all the files and everything for yes. them to access. Yeah. That's the same discussion that, that we had, right, Dr. Mira? Mm -hmm. To address places where they can't access uh, internet or electricity. Um, we've seen pictures of students yeah. going into the open on top of their roofs, getting the Yes, internet. yes, yes. Running to, yeah. running to the nearest uh, town, you know, to access it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So it's good for this sharing platform. Thank you very much. Yeah. Dr. Wasira, anything from that you'd like to add? Of Mr. Pujo. May I uh, respond what about uh, synchronized and unsynchronized? Uh, this situation also happened to me when the students want to learn out of the time or not in the real time, uh, and then they ask me to open the the e learning. Yeah. Uh, this problem, it should be uh, take over by teachers. Teachers should be active, should be make a schedule, should be provide many platform. Not on, I, I just telling about Moodle. There is a lot of platform like Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom, Facebook, Line also. We can, we can uh, connect it as a real time and we can combine with the uh, uh, unsynchronized uh, method. Uh, right now is the transition time between uh, uh, in the previous learning, regular learning to be online. So everybody saw with me to talk, talk about this. And the, the key is teacher or lecturer should take a responsibility and adapt with the factor, maybe device, student and uh, connection, internet connection is very important. So how we adapt with that situation is very important. We can, we can use every tools to deliver our uh, material to teach. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gujo. I've got a question here on the Zoom uh, chat from Prof. Dr. Hajar Rashida. How can we help other colleagues from countries where the internet literacy are not available or very limited? Third world countries. But, uh, Mira? Uh, to help others in remote places who can't access, yes. Okay. Uh, All right. That's what, yeah. what I am is trying to do as well. I see. Okay, so um, I'm not sure whether anybody have heard this. Uh, we have uh, actually. It has been operating for more than ten years, I think. Uh, they have they th there's one NGO called um, it's actually under UN United Nations the online volunteering. So I've been joining uh, this online volunteering for quite some time. So this online volunteering actually create uh, so th there are different roles. Uh, some actually doing research, some actually doing uh, modules preparations. So I think in this time like this, uh, it would be it would be good. Uh, for us to actually share the kind of resources that we have in terms of uh, module preparations, because uh, maybe those uh, certain certain countries, especially, uh, they might not be uh, having the luxury of access to uh, certain software in um, preparing the online materials, for example, or preparing the offline materials for that matters. But uh, for us here, I think uh, if we if really we really into helping. Uh, or collaborating with others, uh, third world country um, with no uh, internet uh, access. Uh, actually, online volunteering have that opportunity, uh, provide that opportunities where we actually donate again uh, in the same spirit as what we have in IUM, but that we have, where we donate the modules, and then those office will actually make sure those uh, those materials be printed and disseminate to the relevant 
schools for that matters. So uh, it, it, I think if really, again, as I said, uh, it is doable, but um, again, uh, to what extent and what kind of directions uh, that we actually can, uh, the kind of assistance that we have to provide or can provide, I think we, we really need to know the, the needs first because uh, maybe the one that we think necessary, it may not be uh, what is critical in other places. And another thing that I want to highlight as well, Dr. Fiza, is the one that we have at the moment, the one, uh, the video, uh, video training that we have on I, and ITALIM. ITALIM is actually based on Moodle. So uh, I'll be more than happy to share those. I mean, like we are happy to share those resources with uh, Nelson Swan University because basically we works on similar platform. Uh, so if there's any of those materials you find it useful by all means, uh, please, please use uh, those materials because uh, I think that's the spirit that we want to have. We want to make sure that whatever we produce actually uh, give benefits to others. So by all means, I think we, we have the same spirit and that matters. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Mira. Would that be the, the, the YouTube channels? Uh, would, would that be easier if, if they would um, like to have access? Uh, actually, they can just search under CPD IIUM and then if they go under e-learning clinic, uh, sorry, e-learning video training, and then all the list of videos that our colleagues have produced, including the e-learning clinic sessions, they, uh, those are accessible to public. Yeah. Okay, we'll take note of that and we'll communicate with Naris One uh, on sure. this uh, after, after the session. I've got uh, a question here from Jean-Philippe. Is that how you pronounce it for Philippe? Um, so, sorry, may I add something about our about the previous question before we move on to Dr. Chong's uh, question? Go ahead. I would like to uh, address some of the issue with our remote education. I think maybe we are in um, the university located in the downtown. We may need to learn from remote education they have had that project before we are trying to uh, managing with our online education. And I personally, I think we rely too much on technology and maybe we, we, we can return to uh, sending teaching material by post to our uh, actually um, Faculty of Humanities and Faculty of Education in, in Narayson University have a project to develop our disadvantaged group of uh, teacher who are living in a very rural area. Um, they are in between um, remote provinces and we try to recruit them to study within the Faculty of Humanities and Education. And when they finished their degree, they can return to work at that school. This is called um, remote education. And I think it's important for us to restore how uh, remote education will help in a manual way rather than using technology because uh, we, we have community base within remote area. They are not able to connect with us via technology and internet. So uh, we, need, we need some of our lecturers to go there to meet them by themselves and we prepare teaching materials and sometimes we communicate with them by post or something with no technology <laughs> allowed. Very okay. true. Yes. We can move on to the next question. Community <laughs> service, real community service in a, in a, in a disaster. <laughs> okay. Yes, in the rural community. Yes. Yes. And actually, we in Thailand, we have a lot of school teachers who have no access to technology before. Right. Yeah. And I'm okay. sure Dr. Mira would, would agree because uh, she's also into the, that <laughs> area. Okay. And another question from um, Jean. I, I would like to have some examples of concrete mistakes or problems faced by teachers who've already experienced e-learning. <laughs> <clears throat> teaching whatever the course topic. Um, maybe uh, anyone, Dr. M uh, Mira or uh, Mr. Pujo, what kind of concrete examples could you uh, share? 
Okay. Uh, concrete, concrete mistakes. Oh, I, yes. I love mistakes because I learn from it. <laughs> Yeah, there's so many mistake, uh, concrete mistakes. Uh, let me reflect on myself. I don't think it's fair to judge others, but let me reflect on myself, on my mistakes when I started e-learning. Is that our assumptions that uh, first is our assumptions that the students have the same attention span as when they are in class, which I don't think, uh, which is prove, research have proven it is not. Um, multitasking is... Um, it's just not happened. There's no such a thing called multitasking, especially. So uh, for us to expect the students would uh, watch the videos and on the same time, uh, they have the WhatsApp open, uh, even in class, sometimes they are actually paying attention. Um, they, their face is uh, facing towards us, but they have those gadgets on. So uh, in, in online learning, that's even worse because we cannot remind, okay, X, please stop playing with mobile phones. Uh, why can you please focus on uh, the board please we don't have that uh, privilege so especially if it's recorded recorded uh, teaching uh, materials so i think we have to make sure we strategize this we work with the short attention span that they have so uh, usually in the first few uh, experience that i have when i started e-learning is that i tend to make the video learning around 15 minutes, the video lecture, sorry, the video lecture around 15 minutes. And I realized we can actually analyze that uh, if you put it in YouTube or if you put it in any e-learning platform, usually it will allow you to actually analyze uh, the, the durations of um, the students actually focus and then usually uh, they call it as retention, retention uh, time. So you can actually analyze from the retention time. Most of the retention time never, never exits uh, eight minutes or sub, seven minutes, I think. So I can say what people have found from their research saying that uh, the retention, uh, the attention span is about uh, five to seven minutes is true because it also happens in my in my course. So I the following semester, I opt for uh, Re, uh, redeveloping those course materials. I put in, uh, re I redesigned the slides. I took, I re-record again, make sure that it doesn't exceed more than five minutes. Uh, I break into pieces, so it becomes a bite-sized bite learning. Uh, and I curate, I think this is something that we have to learn as well in e-learning. We need to curate information. Uh, when we want to produce well, everything. I'm having it right now, Ria, thanks for asking. Sorry? Is that, is that what you're asking? Okay, I'm um, sorry, just in case I miss anything. Right, yeah, so I think we should learn how to curate information because there's so many, so many educators have actually shared the, how they actually cover certain topics. And if we know how to curate information, our learning materials will be a lot more richer. And when it comes to curation, there are three things, search, shift and share so search for the right information using the right keyword getting from the right sources uh, shift make sure that it actually fits to our learning outcome uh, make sure that the examples fit to our contacts and share then only you uh, share with your students so don't just get and share but there's a process of shift making sure that it actually fits to our purpose so that's probably what I have. Okay, in I think mind. it's time that we can go ahead and get started. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, everyone. And I'm delighted to welcome you to our Okay. <laughs> Some probably interference over there. All right. But uh, yeah, thank you, Dr. Mira. Um, there are, well, the thing is, uh, if, I, if my, I may add to Dr. Mira's, yes, uh, we've got to curate. You've got to start uh, now and experience the problems one by one. Just, just today, I had a colleague from a university who, who just reported to me that uh, she recorded 10 lectures already, only to realize that the video was not on, <laughs> or the, sorry, the audio when she listened back. So, oh my goodness, imagine that you have to record it again. So we've got to be tech, techno savvy. We've got to check our tools, whether they are on or off. All right. Um, another question here, uh, anybody uh, would like to share as well, and doesn't have to be from the panelists. Does any one of you 
have any experience with teaching conversation online and difficulties experience? Anyone would like to share? Uh, is John from Nariswan, by the way? Right, okay. So perhaps um, I would like to, if, if we can't give you the answer now, perhaps um, uh, the team in Nariswan would have to, yeah, brainstorm and come up with, with these kind of uh, solutions. We are actually on uh, uh, um, at the last minute of our session, by the way. Um, okay, uh, let me. If you sure would like to have a quick one for John. Yes. Can, can we answer? Uh, hello, Mr. Phillips, John. Um, let me uh, share my experience during the summer course. I teach uh, two courses and I use uh, Microsoft team to teach uh, uh, conversation with the students and it's going well uh, because uh, the connection is very good. And uh, the problem that I found is uh, the students decide to to face to face in the in the in the uh, video uh, conversation. But the first time they say, but uh, let uh, try to build their confidence to to conversation. But uh, after two or three times, they they can do it very well. So I don't have any problem about device and connection about. Uh, using Microsoft Team, but I didn't use Moodle because there is, uh, there is no plat uh, panel in Moodle to uh, uh, teach or learning conversation. And uh, can I add a little bit uh, about the previous question about uh, please make good preparation and then uh, scheduling. Sometimes I found that I make a mistake about scheduling, scheduling quiz, scheduling lesson in the Moodle. And then the third is, please, uh, I agree with Dr. Mira, please make a lesson simple. Student doesn't like complicated and a lot of stuff in the lesson. Make it simple, make it interesting, make it uh, design very, very good. So make them to uh, encourage them to to learn uh, online. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, good tip there. So probably uh, more sharing session at Naris one for your lecturers, Mr. Pujo. <laughs> I'm sure they are, they would after this they would have more uh, experience sharing. Um, John, uh, did did uh, Mr. Pujo? Answer your question just now. Oops, hope so. <laughs> um, another question from uh, from the chat here. Wondering what are other platforms that we use? Um, in if I'm not mistaken, in uh, Naris one, uh, the the Moodle is not the only platform, right? You've got other others. Like uh, like IIUM, we we are uh, as Dr. Mira shared just now in her slides, we are quite open with how the lecturers would want to present uh, their lectures. Yeah, but we do have the predominant platform, which is Moodle, which, is, yeah. which we call iTalim. Yes, um, but we have people who prefer to use Google Classroom and all sorts. We use WhatsApp. Uh, do you have WhatsApp in Naris one? Uh, we use WhatsApp. Um, uh, sometimes students, they can record themselves and they put their videos, short videos on conversations. Um, you could have a WhatsApp call, um, if I may share. If you have conversation um, uh, um, uh, exercises that you need the students to, to talk in Ibasa Indonesia or other uh, language classes, you could get the group to do a WhatsApp video call. And I think WhatsApp allows, is it eight or four per, per call, video call, and you could get them to talk as you watch them on your WhatsApp call or video call. So maybe that would solve and uh, uh, for sure. And you could assess them straight away. But yeah, WhatsApp call is free. I hope so. Is it still free? 
It is, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. Um, any okay. other questions? Yeah. Anyone would like to add anything? Please feel free. Yes, may I add something? Um, Narayana University encourage our lecturers to use um, Moodle, which is e-learning platform, and Microsoft Teams and Google Meet. And we also encourage our lecturers to try new platform and new application as long as our, they think that their student will not get confused about them because students will study a lot of courses. So if our lecturers try using many platforms, students may get confused as well. This is my, uh, my opinion. And um, I, I think what Pujo has shared with us about, um, uh, we need to simplify our lesson, but it is quite difficult for me to simplify the lesson because I'm teaching literature which require complex thinking. So I, I will try to think about that more, about how to encourage students to think in a critical way, not in a simplistic way, because um, we have different approach in terms of content-based or practice-based, right? <laughs> so I think it would be a challenge for me as well because I teach complex uh, content rather than um, greetings and <laughs> What, is, what, what, like, that, yeah, what kind of complex content? Uh, could you give an example? I mean, maybe it, it, it can be complex for me to deliver for, our, for, for my student because I'm teaching literature and film, for example. I'm going to teach um, modern short stories. And um, in the Department of English curriculum, we had a lot of literature courses. So um, our student can can get confused if they have no chance to meet um, lecturers face to face. Um, normally, we can explain the complexity of text, for example, introduction to um, English poetry, American poetry, and background to English and American literature. Um, teacher need to explain a lot more background information rather than just make it uh, lively and cheerful for students to access the content we try to um, encourage students to learn from content-based courses by online learning as well. So it can be difficult for me to explain um, issue like socioeconomic representation within the text to students. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe if I can just add a little bit on that, I can relate to Dr. Wasinrat concern actually on making things simple and fun. Uh, I'm, I'm just so not good with that either. <laughs> but uh, what I can relate is to that. Um, it has to be rather than simply focus on simple, I think it has to be meaningful. So if it's meaningful, uh, and we can relate to that, I think uh, it's a lot more easier for our students to, to absorb. Because um, I, I, my course is on data mining and students when they en uh, enroll to the course, many of them, especially the first few semester when I taught the course, they are so worried because there's so many calculations and what fun in doing calculations, right? So, uh, but I, I, I learned from my mistakes again. I think mistakes is our best teacher. So I learned from my mistakes. Actually, they, um, they are work around it. There are other ways to actually uh, uh, conveying the same idea. So I learned from that. I learned from my students. I think I should put it that way. I learned from my students that they actually best way. So when I asked about this topic and then uh, they don't understand and some other students understood and I asked, um, can you help him uh, or can you help her? Uh, and then she tried to explain and the students Kind of oh, okay, so I think my our our way of converse maybe um, I I learned from my mistake maybe my way of converse was too focused on the concept, but uh, they are trying to relate from the experience. So now I every time I explain about the calculations, I give the reasoning first. So like for example, why do we have to learn about uh, say about um, 
classifications and uh, for example decision tree with so many kind of calculations and i said uh, maybe you can relate from if you want to sort of decide whether someone should be approved or disapproved or when it comes to applications for assistance you should you should know what kind of algorithm is actually happen behind the, the machine so to make sure that this algorithm works well this is the actual things that happen but of course at the real life, this will be done by the machine, but you will be able to appreciate the actual things that happen behind the machine when you know what is happening. So, so when we put that into perspective, the students can relate. Uh, but yeah, it, it requires us to, again, uh, move back a few steps and then look the whole thing again and then we strategize things. But yeah, I can very much relate to your experience. Thank you. It seems that um, while we do face-to-face -face easier because we can explain it straight away, asynchronous would be us making it clearer by detailing every step for the students to follow. Uh, and, and, and this brings to another question by, by our viewers. While uh, er, both parties are uh, grappling with this, this um, online thing yeah what is the role of the lecturers or the teachers in 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 this whole uh, online learning and teaching and and how are we how are we uh, supposed to portray ourselves uh, when there are expectations as dr mira said from the students to for us to you know you you're the lecturer you should know everything you know set set it up for us you know we are just there and click the button and it's fine <laughs> so to me it takes two to tango what do you say Ms. Uh, dr mira i think the COVID have put us on the very noble position now uh, it put us back to the actual role of educators uh, so we used to be pampered by our role as stage of stage. Okay, so everything we took it for granted. We go to the class, blah blah blah, finish session, and uh, we wait for the next sessions. Uh, so we've we've been too pampered with that luxury. Now we realize that it is no longer a valid excuse for us to not learn uh, and relook our role. So now this at this pandemic session actually it allows us to rethink our role that we are not just uh, again as i highlighted in my one of my slides we are not really there in the class to deliver knowledge in fact we shouldn't deliver knowledge we should facilitate learning because even the students fail the course they shouldn't fail in learning my word is that when we assume all oh, the students fail the course there's no way for the students have learned anything i don't think that's the right assumptions the students may have failed the course but we have to make sure they have not failed in learning uh, which means probably because of some other situations uh, maybe because of they don't know how to strategize they don't know how to learn prop uh, to strategy, uh, manage the time for example i think those are the real issue. So I, I always put this, uh, uh, I always highlight my, uh, this to my students. Now in the COVID season, in the COVID season uh, I will be like a coach in the ring box in the, when you are uh, for uh, boxing. Okay, so I will, I will be the coach in that. You have to fight. You have to fight your own, your own fight. You'll be, you will fight there alone, fighting this COVID thing fighting your uh, uh, the, uh, whatever challenges you have. You have to fight that. But I will be in the corner watching you where I will be there every time you need assistance. I will be there when you need any uh, support. I will, not, I will not go anywhere, inshallah, if my life uh, sustain, <laughs> inshallah. So I will, I will be there. So they, they need to know that there are, there are person actually watching and then uh, ready to be contacted anytime. And uh, I actually called some of my students personally. I called them personally. And I when I called them, I just realized how how this how all this while, uh, I haven't think of that calling students can actually make an impact. When I called them personally and they said, um, who is this? Uh, this is Dr. Mera. Oh, madam, am I in trouble? So that's the response. They're, they're worried when we are calling them, it's actually trouble. So all this while, we have been so distanced with them. 
the business is just going and then but we are we're never thinking about how much they actually will need us and this is a learning process for me they need us the most this time so yes the business need to be done as usual the the content needs to be delivered but more than that i think our role is beyond just taking the syllabus i think it has to be more than facilitating the learning i think wallahu alam here we are facilitators and i think i, I will have to agree because there are lecturers out there who are solely face to face people uh no touchy feely kind of lecturers you know i don't call my students they call me <laughs> so now the role is switched we've got we've got their phone numbers we've got their emails so there's no excuse and um i think we just have to have a little bit of that tlc for our students now as much as they rely on us dr wasir right uh mr pujo anything you'd like to add thank you dr mira Um, on behalf of our colleague, I think we have learned a lot from you, and I would like to say thank you so much. <laughs> Dr. Mira's presentation is so uh, inspiring for us all. I've seen from our colleagues' comment and feedback. That's very positive things for us <laughs> during this time. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Wasirat. I think the feeling is mutual. Without your uh your staff questions we would never realize that they are oh okay you know we we address that but it's good to be reminded again because there's so many so many things to 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 handle and settle thank you mr pujo anything from you uh from me is i'm i'm learning a lot from dr mira that uh yeah we should uh taking as a agent of uh learning right now and we should uh take a lot of action right now in this situation and then uh we use a lot of tools to to not only to deliver but beyond on, be, beyond on, on that yeah and uh i think uh yeah i just suggest for my colleagues my friends in malaysia to start to build uh, online learning with many kind of platform and yeah try to adapt who, who what what is the the platform that is very uh, adapt adaptive with the environment of learning yes thank you mr pujo uh, and thank you to uh, the the chat room people who have also helped answered chat room other chat, uh, other people's questions in the chat sarah sarah dot my thank you for um explaining why zoom and moodle should be understood differently and where they complement each other uh and um yes so that is that sorry can i just i, I uh, yeah i would like to express my gratitude and thanks to dr wasinrat and uh mr puzo as well it's the first time we have this long conversations but i feel like we are so connected and we are i think this is the beginning of our collaborations uh looking forward uh, and again uh, i i humbled offered my uh our resources that we have on websites by all means please feel free to make use of them and looking forward for more sharing thank you so much dr visa and the team so without me saying concluding or concluding the session the panelists have already concluded themselves <laughs> which means we uh need to end the session because it has gone past 11:30 but i love the fact that uh we've got questions from from people and yes our extreme um appreciation to dr mira dr wasirat mr pujo for sharing and having the session with us at klm and hopefully we can now uh, benefit from the session and have more collaborations like this um if there's nothing else from the members we thank you for participating in today's very small sharing but hopefully beneficial so with that um have a 
let's say, have a good teaching experience, exploring experience with this new norm, with the technologies and etc. And hope uh, all of us fare well <laughs> in this adventure or experience. Thank you again. Thank you, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Thank you. Bye. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.